Hello and welcome to the Effective Living Series 2023. This is your authoritative platform for setting off and doing well in this new year of ours. The theme for Effective Living Series is 2023 Starter Pack and we've divided the month into four weeks. Week one is what we call the physical preparation for 2023. We're starting off obviously by what is at the bottom of the ladder when it comes to the hierarchy of needs. A healthy body. A healthy mind requires a healthy body. So what are we doing today? We'll be talking about the dieting and nutrition aspects of effective living. And our topic for the morning is the healthy eating guide for 2023. My name is Bernard Avale. I have a fantastic guest. She's in the presence of Pel Selome. She's a nutritionist, dietitian, and she's here to help us to know how to eat healthy for 2023. Pearl, great to have you. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning. Good to be here. It's great to have you. So you are a dietitian. What does that mean? What do you do? Well, so dietitians help guide people as to what to eat, when to eat, the portions to eat, mm. and all that. Yeah. So are, are we right in starting Effective Living 2023 with a topic like the Healthy Eating Guide? Is that very, a good place to start? Very, very important. Mm. I, I, I was excited when I heard that was the first thing you want to talk about because you cannot go a day without eating. Food is like the fuel for your body. It is like what you put in your car, mm -hmm. if I may say. Your yeah. car cannot really work well without fuel. Right. So food is something that everybody needs and it has to be done right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we talk about healthy eating, what are we talking about? So when we talk about healthy eating, first of all, people need to build a good relationship with food. Over the years, what mm -hmm. we've realized is that people don't have a very good relationship with food. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes they, they feel like they are being forced to eat something. But if you have a good relationship with food, you are thinking beyond just what you are putting in your stomach. You are thinking about how it impacts your health, how it impacts your productivity, your wellness, and uh, all that. So. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about healthy eating, it's when people are able to put together a meal that goes beyond just satisfying them, but has impact on their wellness. So and food is not just to satisfy. No. Just eat the food and enjoy it. No. It goes beyond <laughs> that. It goes beyond just you filling your tummy. I like that. Yeah. It goes beyond. Yes. So this is the first time I've heard this. Have a good relationship with your food. Yes. I know you have a good relationship with your God, with your spouse and your yes. children, but yes. I didn't know. So I'll put it on my bucket list. 2023, good relationship <laughs> with my food. Yeah, Great. Sure. So what should people look out for when we talk about a healthy eating, eating. for 2023? 2023, mm. yes. So first of all, people need to start checking themselves. Okay. You know, mm. it's it's funny, but it's interesting. Mm. People shadow uh, servicing for their cars, for their air conditions, for appliances that they use at home. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to their body, people would normally, well, it's changing now, but typically people will go to the hospital when they are ill. Mm -hmm. It is when they fall sick that they go to the hospital. But we're saying that in 2023, people to make it a point to do a health check Mm -hmm. maybe a nutrition focused okay. health check okay. this will help you to know where you are starting off from will help you to identify the gaps and then interventions can come mm. to help you even come up with your goals for the year mm. um, you can't just run into what everybody else is doing because like i said about cars every car is different and every engine is different. We are very even particular about telling the mechanic, don't put this oil in my engine, it will damage it. But when it comes to food, we just grab anything. I think that should change. So first of all, people should do a health check. Mm -hmm. That will set, set the basis for So when you say a nutrition focused health check, that, that means, so, so if I tell the doctor or whoever that I wanted to do a nutrition focus. They will know what to do, what to look out for. Yes. Yeah, as so against a general health check. So the nutrition focus health check will mm. focus on some particular indicators. Mm. So for example, you should know your your weight. Okay. For starters, at least if you know your weight, then you are thinking about whether I want to lose weight or whether I want to maintain my weight or whether I want to um, gain weight. Gain weight. Mm -hmm. So your your weight should be known. You should also know. Um, basic things like your blood pressure okay. you should know that you should also know how much sugar is in your blood mm -hmm. 
So getting a, a blood sugar test done, you should also do a lipid profile. That will help you know the different types of fat that you have in your system and mm -hmm. then what needs to come down, what needs to, I mean, appreciate and all that. Mm -hmm. You can also do some examination on your organs. Okay. So your kidney can be checked, mm -hmm. your liver can be checked, some hormonal tests can be checked mm -hmm. for you. You can do a waist circumference check you know <laughs> so all these things when you know from the beginning mm. it helps you to at least be at peace and know that okay this is the kind of goals I want to set I want to maintain my weight I want to gain a little I want to just lose a little bit of uh, belly fat mm -hmm. so you, you've said a lot of things so so you do your weight blood pressure yes blood, blood sugar, sugar sugar lipid profile, profile which is fat yes and then organ function, we talk about kidney, yeah. talk about liver, liver, and then what else? That's quite a lot of tests. You can also <laughs> Just to start, so to start the year, you must know all of these things to know. At least you should. Wow. You should. I think um, over the years, we mm. prioritize other things mm. apart from sometimes we don't pay too much attention until something happens. So I think we should start re-looking at that. Mm. These tests may cost at the beginning, yeah. but when you're looking at it in the long term, it can save you okay. from a possible stroke or a possible um, you losing your kidneys, mm. which is ongoing now. A lot of people, a lot of young people are gradually getting to that point where they have to spend so much to maintain their health because at the beginning, they didn't even know that they had these conditions mm. there with their bodies. So it's good to, for people to know. So when I do this test, yeah. I give the result to my dietitian yeah. because these are nutrition focused results. So maybe the doctor will say you need to see a dietitian yeah. to come up with a meal plan for you yeah. based on what we've seen. Find, yeah. So the doctor could also even advise. So for example, if you did your blood pressure or your glucose test and for example it was high, the doctor could suggest that okay let's do further examinations and find out what is going on with your body mm. and fix it. Mm. I see. Yeah. So these are basic things you do before you start any nutrition or dieting plan at all? It will be good to start, but then it's not like a, 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 a hard fat thing that it will be good it's done. Yeah. But without it too, we can still figure out something. Okay. Now, yeah. on the basis of that, so we are in January, okay? Yeah. This healthy eating guy, is it forever or is it something I'm going to just do for January? When we say we are doing healthy <laughs> eating, is it like... We are just starting the year right so that we can uh, continue with our life or no it has to be like an ongoing thing mm. eating is something that is done every day yeah and so like i said from the beginning you need to build a healthy relationship with food mm. you don't have to feel like you're in a prison when you hear food when when we talk about food or when we talk about diet it should be something that you wake up feeling happy to do mm -hmm. people have sort of put themselves in they, they restrict themselves they overly restrict themselves mm -hmm. and so when it's time for eating they are not even happy to eat mm. and your mood affects the way you eat your mood affects the way the food would even be um, metabolized really? in your system yes so your your mental state can determine how, how your you body eat. relates to the food yes this is still the Effective Living series. This is our first episode for the year on the theme, physical preparation for 2023. And today our topic is the healthy eating guy. We've learned some interesting things today. So apparently you need a healthy relationship with your food. Mm -hmm. And also your mental state can determine how your body processes food. Now that, so you mean if somebody's like very, very sad or they are depressed, they may not be able to process food properly or if they are too excited. So the mental state can affect how the body responds to the food. Yeah, so there are two things. Mm -hmm. When you are feeling very sad, mm. sometimes you don't even have the air to eat. Okay. Right. Mm. And all these things, your, your, your sadness state or your state of mind mm -hmm. affects how the hormones are released. And we, we have in digestion, we have hormones that take you through the digestion process and all that. So your mental health state mm. has a strong impact on your mood has mm. an impact on how you eat. All right. Yeah. So we've examined ourselves. We've done our nutrition-focused medical thing. Yeah. So now we are supposed to see you. 
So maybe they said, Bernard, you have to eat more, or you are eating too much, yeah. you are too fat, or you are yeah. too whatever. Let's walk us to what's a healthy meal? What's a, give, give me an example of a healthy, okay. a healthy meal. Okay, one thing I would want our viewers to note is that we don't have a one size fit all kind of thing. Okay. So when, it, when we talk about diet or when we talk about healthy eating, mm -hmm. what we would recommend for you, Bernard, is mm -hmm. different from what I may recommend for the next person. Okay. Even if in, we are in a family, in a household, what I recommend for the children is different from what the parents or the elderly people would get. When we talk about a healthy plate, mm -hmm. on our plates here we have the different food groups. We have different food groups. We've tried to I mean, put them into like three major food groups. Right. There are more though, but mm -hmm. try to put them into three major food groups. So on our plate here, on your plate, mm -hmm. every time you pick up your plate to eat, mm -hmm. you should ask yourself some questions. Right. Whatever it is I'm eating, how is it going to affect my health? How right. is it going to improve my productivity at work? Mm -hmm. How is it going to even help me be uh, have a good mental health state mm -hmm. so this is a a meal like a, a typical meal for this looks like contumery this is contumery spinach okay. and spinach. then this is rice okay and then this is some fish oh okay so contumery is uh, greens yes the rice is your Staples, carbohydrates yeah Staples. and then your protein this is your protein yeah so you can either have your fish or your egg as your protein or mm. even some beans in case you don't have fish or egg available what some is, beans. are there percentages yes yeah, so mm. typically when it comes to the portion sizes it mm. differs for everybody mm -hmm. it's just like how uh, a, a 2.5 liter car will use more fuel than the other depending mm. on the distances you travel so when it comes to the portions exact portions everybody has a different one they would need mm -hmm. but typically we're saying that for you to maintain a very good health mm -hmm. you should at least half your plate with vegetables half your plate of vegetables yes so, so in this case if you want to have the plate of vegetables you will put more green so vegetables are the green ones or are they also yellow so yeah we have different Kinds variety of, vegetable. of okay. vegetables here we have some carrots okay we so have this some is part of the greens carrots and then your I plate see, should it, it shouldn't I just I see cabbage green. and tomatoes. Yes, and so, then some lettuce and cucumber are also so here. So half of my plate should, should be to have this. Yeah. Hey. And then you have your <laughs> rice on the side. So the white is half. And then your your whether your it's protein. chicken or your beef okay. should be. So I want to eat mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. So let's let's remove. Let's put the potato there. Okay. So this is your white. This is twenty five percent. This is 50%. A quarter, yes. And then the rest of this is A your... Quarter. The last quarter should be your protein. Wow. Yeah. So white, brown, multicolored. Yes. So your plate should at least look very colorful. The more colorful it looks, the more healthier so it is. So a big bowl of fufu surrounded by a benkwai. <laughs> it's colorful a, enough or it's not? A big bowl of fufu with the abenkwai should have some vegetables. So some okra, some garden necks, some ayoyo, ayoyo and... At the, uh, those vegetables should be seen. So if I'm in eating kinky, kinky with hot pepper. Yes. So kinky with your hot pepper, you can still have your vegetables, your tomatoes, your onions. Can cut it. You cut it on the side. Not just grind green pakushito. No. And put the, fried fish. <laughs> the grounded, the grounded pepper can be there, and then you can still have some chopped vegetables on the side. And then your fish can be on the other side. Mm. So at least every day your place should look very colorful. And in fact, for it to be sustainable, you should mm. always go for seasonal foods. Mm. Luckily for us, at least every month, we mm. have foods that are very common and quite less expensive to mm. find. Mm. So to make this healthy eating journey a sustainable one and a doable one, of course, you should choose a budget-friendly mm. food option. Okay, let me, let me see if yes. I can do a budget-friendly something here today. <laughs> so maybe beans. Okay. So this is this, this is my protein, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, no, I want red beans. Red beans. Yeah, okay. I want red beans. So okay. red beans is here. Okay. That's my twenty five percent protein. Yeah. Uh, my carbohydrates. I'm you doing can breakfast. Go so for bread. Bread. Do you have okay. bread? Yeah, I have bread. Yeah. So this is my bread. Yeah. And then some. So this can be a good breakfast. Sure. Sure. Okay. So uh, bread. With, with some beans. Oh, I can replace this with this. 
with your eggs. So bread, eggs, and this. Yes. Okay. Let's assume I'm doing lunch, so I don't want to do this. I take this off. I want to do lunch. And lunch is also the same proportion as breakfast in terms of the 25, 25, 50. Yeah. So for my lunch, I want potatoes. So I have my potato here. Um, uh, what am I doing potatoes? Can I have give, some give me an idea. Contumbre. Contumbre and fish. Fish or egg. But my contumbre is not enough. It's only 25 so I need more greens. Then you can add more of the greens there. What is this? Beetroot. Beetroot. Does it qualify for green? Yeah, you can. It, it, it shouldn't just be green. Ah, it's just it, like, should, uh, it should be colorful. So this is the your... The vegetable side should be very colorful. So these are your, your nutrients greens. and vitamins? Yes. Okay, so this... How does this taste, guys? So potatoes, fish... Is this something you eat? Will it work? Okay, so we've done this for lunch. We want to do supper now. Let's try a supper meal. Give me a supper idea. I've eaten contumbre in the afternoon with my potato and fish. So supper... This looks like okra soup. Yeah, okra so, so we can have kinky from the corn. Kinky from the corn. Okay. And then your chicken or beef or steak. Okay. This is steak. So this is, this is chicken. Yeah. But I need more greens here. Add some. You can use the contumbre. I can put the contumbre here as well. Mixed with it. So breakfast, lunch, and supper, half of it must be nutrients and vitamins. Yes. Typically, you should have more veggies on your plate. Yeah. When it comes to the portions, mm. though, it depends on your activity level. Okay. For example, if you are a sedentary worker, mm -hmm. you may not be spending so much energy because most of the time you may be sitting and working. Mm -hmm. So the portions you go for will be different from somebody who is actively working okay. on the road. So you can be a sedentary worker and consume about three balls of kinky, certain. What will happen is with time, your body will keep storing the SS. And then that is when the challenges... So if I'm a footballer or like somebody who's in active work, yeah. I can afford a few more carbohydrates yeah. because if, I will burn it quicker. Yes. Mm. yes. So that is when the dietitian comes in to guide you as to how much calories you need from the kinky or your banku or your rice or your wache or your yam. Mm. That is when we come in to guide you. What about pregnant women? What's a typical good plate for a pregnant woman? For a pregnant woman, you are looking at her meeting the nutritional needs of her, herself and the baby. Mm -hmm. So depending on her appetite, we can give her some wache. Okay. So that's rice and beans? Rice and beans uh -huh. with some egg and fish because she needs some more protein. Who has taken my egg? One <laughs> of the people on the floor have come to steal the egg. <laughs> what happened to the egg? The egg. Okay. okay. I thought the cameraman had come for the egg. And then some fish. <laughs> some yeah. fish for the for pregnant the, woman. Uh -huh. So they also do the same proportions? Similar. But then the quantities will differ. Okay. Because they are nutritional needs. Your nutritional needs mm. differ as you go through the life cycle. Mm. Yes. What is this? This is for wraps. Uh, okay. Yeah. It looks like pancake. Okay. Yeah. I'm told red meat can... A, a lot of people who try to sort of... Um, they are like middle-aged people. They want to control certain things. They say, well, they want to eat red meat. So a lot of friends say, I don't eat red meat. What is wrong with red meat? Red meat can be eaten, yes. It just has a, a bit more fat than when you compare it with uh, lean meat. And so we say that for, there should be a balance. So what, what, where lean meat is what? Chicken? Chicken. Chicken is lean meat. Yes. Red meat is beef yes. or some... Beef, uh, goats. Those ones are classified as red meat. So even if you go for red meat, mm -hmm. it should be, you see how this red meat is. Mm -hmm. It's very dry. It has no fat on it. Oh, okay. And then you should also watch the portions. In fact, everybody has the amount of proteins they need for a day. But typically, a lot of people wouldn't even know how much protein I need for my age. So when you come to see the dietitian or the nutritionist, then they'll guide you. They'll tell you, okay, for your age, you need about 50 grams of protein. Mm. And that 50 grams is represented by maybe about three of this. Is it true that younger people require more protein than older people, generally? Generally, yes, because the younger people are now growing. Mm -hmm. The proteins are like the building blocks. It's like building a house. Mm -hmm. You need more blocks as you are raising the building. Then you get to the lentil level and then 
mm. you are just maintaining. So mm. typically, growing children need a lot more protein, protein than adults. It doesn't mean that adults also don't need, because as you are aging, you are losing muscle, which you have to replace. So mm. we still need protein as we grow. This is the Effective Living Series. We're talking healthy eating for 2023. We're actually experimenting with some recipes, a healthy eating guide. My guest is Bel Salome. And we're just trying to understand the various nutritional needs for the various stages of your life. So younger kids, obviously, more proteins and as you reduce. Is there, an, okay, so um, vegetable protein versus animal protein. Any ideas, any thoughts? Is this better? I know people who do beans and say they don't eat meat. Is it, what, what are we doing? What are, is it a vegetarian, for example? Yes. So all in all, that, like I said earlier on, there should be a balance. Mm -hmm. Plant protein is, well, typically better than uh, in terms of trying to cut down on your fats, etc. You rather recommend a plant protein than the mm. animal so protein. So this, this guy, be, red beans or yes, black eyed peas, generally better than this guy. Yes, but the, the challenge with this? steak. Steak, ah, even the challenge. The challenge with um, taking out the animal protein completely is that you may not have certain nutrients. So, for example, you may not get B12 if you are solely going to be on the plant protein. You may not get it entirely mm. as you should. Mm. And so for people who are off the animal protein, sometimes you have to supplement it for them. Okay just so that they don't lose out. People are drinking interesting things these days. I know people are blending melon and drinking with the seed. Some are taking beetroot in various quantities. In fact, when you go to some of the shops, they do beetroot type things for you. Some are chewing celery. Yeah. These things I've mentioned, yeah. are they good to just do or you need to be, it needs to be prescribed for you to do it? Certainly, it, you need some guide mm. because we've seen patients who have come who have unfortunately lost their organs hey. because they took too much of certain things. You can lose became, an organ? Yes, you can. Hey. You can. People are losing their kidneys. People are losing their liver because mm. it, it's, they've overloaded the system too much with certain things that they felt were good. So all in all, there should be a balance. Mm. You can have a bit of everything, but then you should be guided. I see. And then you should, you should have a good balance. I see. You I know, know people who also blend turkey berries and they drink it happily. What are they, why are they doing that? So turkey berries has a very good source of iron. So if somebody came with, for example, anemia, we recommend that it should be added to their meals. Mm. But again, there mm. should be a balance. Mm. You can't just be on just the turkey berries mm. because your body needs a variety of nutrients that mm. just one meal cannot provide everything. Mm. That is why you need all the various food groups, but in the right proportion. Mm. So that at the end of the day, your body mm. can still function as a should. A friend of mine brought something from some country. He said it's like for busy workers in Silicon Valley. So they, it's like a powder that they blended all the nutrients together. They just mix it with water and drink. They said because they don't have time to cook, yeah. they, they have put all the nutrients into something. Yeah. Are these things, yeah, is it possible to have such a thing? <laughs> It's possible. Mm. It's it's possible. But when you know the typical Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian, mm. we are looking at how you can sustain that. Because mm -hmm. these things are expensive. So if you are going to be on it for a short term, fine. Mm. But if it's something that you are looking at being on for a long time, mm -hmm. the question is, can you sustain it? Can your budget hold it? Mm. That is why I would always recommend fresh food. Even if you going with the supplements along the side. Mm. You should look at your budget mm. and think through it, whether it is something that you can sustain for a very long time. Are there foods that you say 100% avoid, irrespective of who you are? Okay, or are there bad foods that you say, Charlie, this one, maybe once a year or once a month, but don't eat it. Yes. Can you give me some names? Yes, what we would call the, the junks. Junk food. The junk foods. Example. We call them junk because they typically will not give you the essential nutrients that we are looking for your body to get. Mm -hmm. So for such foods, we would say you should go for them um, sparingly or once in a while. It shouldn't be something that you fall mm. in love with and be with all the time. Your focus should rather be on the foods that will make you more productive, the foods that will make you well. But what is junk generally. food? You haven't defined it. 
junk food is foods that will not give you a lot of essential nutrients. It will give you some nutrients like calories. But we don't know. We don't know <laughs> that. I mean, we, so, we, are, we didn't go to school. So if you say... So the junk foods, I would say, like typically burgers. like... You go for hamburger with a big, the yes, big, that the big chips, thing in the middle. The chips. Chips the and fries. fries. Yeah. The fries. I those hope the are children the are watching. They are the ones who oh, want to go and eat this. Those, so those chicken are the with ones. fries, with, yes. they will just put like uh, tomato ketchup. Those junk are the food. ones that we we'll call the junk food. Or because big, big, um, it's like a burger with some big meat in the middle. In the middle and then they pour some things on it. A little bit of veggies in there. It's, it's also junk food. It's something that you wouldn't want to encourage. They go for all the time. Is Kelly Willie really junk food? Not entirely. Kelly is not junk food. No. What about Willie? <laughs> Willie, you get some nutrients from Willie. It's just that the nutrients you may get from for example, eating an egg. It's better than what you get from Willie. Yes. But Willie, you chew it a lot too. And if it's hard, you just worry your... your, your <laughs> what about um, Domedo? I know Jimmy Quist. He used to like that a lot. Go and buy... Uh, what? <laughs> a cow, um, a pig, you know, and they chew it. A lot. Is it good? It's, it's a lifestyle that shouldn't be encouraged. You can have it once in a while, but it shouldn't be something that uh, you are focused on actively doing. Uh, Jimmy because, said he has stopped. Yeah, because with time, <laughs> uh, you may develop certain conditions that put your body in a very... Uh, so, so general situation. guide is uh, moderation and proportionality. Yeah. So you're saying typically half of the plate must have the nutrients. Your carbs must be at least 25% and then your protein as well. So that's a general guide. Of general course, there are specific guide. emphasis for people. Yeah. Junk food is a no-no. Yeah. What about fizzy drinks? Fizzy drinks, yes, yeah, should be cut down on or avoided if you can. Mm. Yes, because we've seen that sugar is something that even has an impact on your mental health. Is it? Yes. And so if you are going to, instead of going for the fizzy drink, you rather go for a fruit. Because in the fruit there, you get some vitamins. So a fresh fruit. Fresh fruit or fresh instead of juice. A, instead of a fizzy, a fizzy drink. So freshly drink. squeezed orange juice, juice. as Maybe against a fizzy drink. A fizzy drink. Maybe opens, once in wait, a while. So fizzy drink is the one that opens it, boom, then something will come out. Yes. Okay. So once in a while, yeah, typically you may mm. want to go for that, but right. on a regular basis, you should rather go for fresh. So what are the final things you want people to remember about healthy eating for 2023? Okay, so things I would like people to remember for 2023 when it comes to food or healthy eating is mm -hmm. that um, you should develop first of all a good relationship with food mm -hmm. you should look for a budget friendly um, recipe mm -hmm. you should try new things mm -hmm. right i think people are stuck with so many old way of eating and it gets boring for them so once they enter their kitchen they're already bored and so that is why they will just run to the junk food because it's quick fix you can easily find it so try new recipes, have a, a budget-friendly uh, food options, go for seasonal foods, and then take it one day at a time, you know, and it, it will be fine. I'm sure there's a lot more questions people have for you. And how can they get in touch with you? So on Facebook, I'm Pell Salome. Mm. Um, on Instagram, I'm Pell Sell One. Mm -hmm. And then on Twitter, I'm Pell Salome. All right, you can yeah. do that. With the, 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 the details are on the screen. Thank you for watching. This is just our first episode for the Effective Living Series 2023. This is a conversation on healthy eating. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you can implement the plan. Talk to your nutritionist, your dietitian, and let's face 2023 with a lot of energy. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.